Welcome to the Adapt or Die podcast. This podcast explores ideas related to self-growth, finding meaning, and living a more fulfilled lifestyle. It's your host, with the most, Armel Tala. And it's your host, on the low, Ben Smith. We're two college students on our own path of lifelong learning with the hope that you will join us in our journey. And now, it's time for the next episode of the Adapt Adapt or Die Die podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of the AOD podcast. Today, you got my cute co-host. Be- Whoa, cute. Cute. No, I'm kidding. I thought you said I was pretty. Yeah, no, nah, you're definitely pretty. He's not cute. He's not <laughs> no, that's no. He's a pretty but, boy. Oh. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. But okay, so what are we talking about today, Ben? Because honestly, what? I'm going to be real with y'all. I have zero clue. Like, I, I, I remember, You've been a little busy, though. A little busy, a little busy. You know, things move, moving back. You guys see a different... Hold on. You guys, you guys see a different setup. I, I forgot to press timer, press start on timer. But you guys see a different setup in the back. This is by far your, your favorite? No, easily. This is my favorite setup. I love this, this the, wall. I, I love this wall. It's a little background. I guess this is, this is a little background. You guys intro to my life but so move back to austin right busy doing that internship and everything and then move into this place i get a job here people are like why do you have a brick wall well i live in a in a university apartment that looks like it's in the ghetto like you look at the apartment you're like bro you live in the actual ghetto like my friends like actually like it, lo- my, it looks like that. Yeah, it's like my black friends were like yo you look like you are in the ghetto and i was like I, trust me, this is the least ghetto place you. You you look at the house; it's like old. Like I'm talking like really, you could projects looking type of apartments, right? And it's just like Asian Indian, like really yeah. smart. It's because it's a university apartment, graduate students living here, which is just like hilarious. But that's not even the point. The point is, since it's old, they got brick walls. These are real brick walls. Like no, yeah, the, it, it's solid. That's not. It's not that's like not, that's not, not a like green screen. That's not brick no. Walls that is inside of the wall. Like that's a real brick wall. By like it's keeping me per, like out, through the other side of the wall. Something else. Like but, like the architect was like, you know what? Let's make a brick. Like let's make a brick. <laughs> he was like, it's a good decision. I think this place has been around since 1962. My real question is, I know y'all can't see this, but it's brick right there. It's wood over there. And it's actually like some cement blocks that yeah. are like white, you know, like nah, over yeah. there. Someone mentioned like, why is your apartment three different type of walls? Just and what's with your ceiling? And it's, what are the, what's the tiles on the ceiling? And it's t- wow. I just, and there's a little Anyways. bit of like. Yeah, we, I, I don't want to, I don't want to crap on your apartment too yeah, much. Yeah, nah, I love it though. No, I, I, I mean, mess with brick, it. It's, that's, I might even stay in this one just because. It's a vibe. Brick, the brick wall. It's for the podcast. I'm doing it for the podcast. Never said I never did anything. Not to mention, someone had a big birthday recently. Oh, yeah. I guess we should talk about that. Okay, guys. Before we talk about how to learn faster, because that's the topic today. I forgot we were doing a podcast <laughs> about that. But before we talk about how to learn faster, I did turn 20. This is what I want to say about being 20. Yeah, what, 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 what's new for Mel? I mean, one, I feel like I got to read now since I'm old. Like, <laughs> no! God! No! God! Please, no! No, I'm kidding. But I don't know. For me, like that's I said... That's a requirement of aging. <laughs> that's a requirement of aging. But for me, really quick, is I felt like even though you shouldn't put like a day and be like, this is really when the grind starts. To me, like 20 is kind of the mark like you, you are not a teenager. Yeah, you're like, I right, well... Like, it's like, ah, uh, you know, I'm a teenager. Like, nah, like you are in your... Tw- like, I got to say I'm in my 20s. Do you know how... Does that bother you at all? Does it bother you that, like, you're friends with, like, 19... Oh, I'm friends with a 19-year-old? I'm doing a podcast with a kid right now. A child. A child. I'm a, if I do something teenager. dumb, I just go, I'm a teenager. You know, it's, it's and all if right. I do, and if I do something dumb, it's like, you are a grown man. You got bills to pay. Bro, you, you should know better. Too. You do have bills to pay. Okay, guys. But, well, you need to get going. But look, since I'm 20 now, I got There's one thing you got to... You know, you're in 20s. You got to develop skills. And I felt like... And I'm the one who chose to do this part. I think I told him, like, because when I was up, Ben's like, oh, never got ideas. Ben, I know you want to do a podcast about something. But <laughs> he, he asked me, and I'm like, let's do learning faster, because that's like a skill I really want to learn. Like, that's one thing I have ran down. Like, I want to learn how to learn faster. But I did not even try to learn how to learn, learn faster. But Ben, sorry, right. how to learn, learn faster. I read a book from Mel, so we're okay. Okay. But where do we even start? 
let me uh, usually I would give a roadmap and tell you where we're going but okay. generally we're just gonna talk about the best ways to learn so there you go um, yeah and we don't want to ruin it for me since it kind of gives a little surprise right I want to ask you what are your top three study habits I guess when you when you're trying to learn something mainly in school but really with anything if you want to go there three study habits this is interesting. Or learning habits are we going to frame habit. it because i would say like i probably have really bad like well let's, let's just let's just roll but, with it and see what top happens because obviously i have some study habit that's good it's got me to where i am today one i think number one is obsessive that's like okay it's that's is it's that a study like, habit or is it a personality trait is that maybe both but okay no but my <laughs> thing is like like, really, when it's time, since I was a big procrastinator, mm-hmm. my thing was, like, I would just, you know, do it, like, like let's say I'll, cr- I'll really grind it out. Like, when studying okay. for, let's say studying for my in- internship, I did eight hours, my goal was to do eight hours of studying a day. I no, I remember you were, yeah, I, I, I remember like, you, like, I, I was, like. There's yeah. some days I didn't reach eight hours. I reached six because it's just, like, mentally, like, no, you, you just get you tired. Just, yeah, no, you just But, like, can't. mine is, like, intense. Like, really go okay. at it. Like, one thing, like, when I really have to study for something, it's one thing, super long time. That's okay. my first study tip. I can tell you that that's, that's already a strike. Definitely not the best habit. <laughs> so, you're, you're over one. Really get better. Over one. Okay. Um, second, next study tip would be. One eternity later. I would definitely say doing. Like, you just got to do a lot. Like, math for I was Like, one thing I didn't write about English, or I never did study for it, because like, y'all know how you study for those. Like, I would just do math problems. Like, if I want to get prepared, like, the most important is practicing. Reading over lectures, even though I take notes, mm-hmm. I don't ever really read back on them and you saying, we're going to get into that later. And then <laughs> last, I would say is, I think... Again, I said taking notes is not good to, because I never go back to read them, but taking notes in class and stuff because, like, I feel like it help, It makes me it makes me pay attention more. That's fair. But what I'm realizing is that I should just read the material and do it, the things before because then you don't have to take notes during class and just pay attention. And, like, you look and you learn more just by asking questions about things you already confused. I, I definitely agree with that, too. Um, I will say the doing, that's a great tip. Um, I fully agree with that. The notes, I'm... Notes are not, they're not bad or good. They're just not, they're just not optimal. Okay. Um, so let's just go over, um, an overarching idea really is that your learning. So how well you learn is really a function of how much effort you put into something. Mm-hmm. So if you put more effort into something, um, and it really, I mean, when I say effort, I mean like how, how hard did you critically think about something? How, how much did you struggle with it? Was it difficult for you? If it was difficult, then you were probably doing a good job of learning. If it was easy, um, which a lot of times note taking is, you know, you can just mindlessly take notes, yeah. especially on the computer. Yeah. If you're if you're on your laptop taking notes, just stop. I'm sorry. Like just just don't. Yeah. Um, that's really just not a great way to learn. Um, but your learning is a function of how much effort you put into something. That's kind of like the big overarching idea here. Um, so. I know you said like rereading in lecture notes, like rereading lectures and stuff. Um, that's just not good. No, I, <laughs> it's I, it's a waste of time. Uh, but let well, me. Why why do you think it's a waste of time? I was about to let ask hear you why. <laughs> but um, like why, why, why what's would your it theory? be a waste of time? Reread. It's just. I feel like it's probably because you don't really pull any new information from when you reread it, or you don't connect anything new that you didn't already. Maybe like you remember uh, like one little like one little idea or one little part of like uh you know of like that subject but you don't actually it's like nothing new is connecting in your brain like you're not really making your brain try to remember you're just kind of going over what it has stored in the back that's that's a good uh, that's a good start i like that Ooh. um but i will scientist. say that's not the exact reason um Never mind. It, you're, i feel like you, you weren't that far off though the real i said there's two main reasons the first is that when you think about what is what is a lecture uh your notes your textbook what are they for? It's for an easily digestible format for you to understand something, right? It's not the hardest thing to understand. They, they don't want to make it difficult because you need to you need to be babied into concepts, right? That's pro. Hold on, that's actually really profound. Right. So you need to be babied into concepts. So when you're reviewing your lecture slides, your notes, your textbook, you're you're reviewing a you're reviewing the the most easy things to understand, the base level knowledge, um, which not only does that gives you an inaccurate idea of how well you know something, right? Because you're 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 looking at the easiest stuff. And two, if you're just reading something, how do, how do you actually know you know it? Because you just read that and you said, okay, I understand what that means. 
but did you, could you recall that information? Could you could you pull out that CS concept and use it when you're slow in a practice down, problem? Slow down. Sorry. That's huge. That's actually huge. I, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but the fact that you said when you're reading it, you're just saying like you understand, like you understand what you're reading, but you don't actually know. Right. Like, how do you know you know that? And the only way you can know that you know that is by actually like recalling it or yeah. solving that problem. And yeah, that that was the big thing for me. Like, if you the like babying yourself in lecture, like that's why rereading and lecture slides, rereading that stuff, it's just it's a no go. Um, I'll be honest, it's essentially a waste of time. That was the biggest, and it shocked me. I was like, wait, what? Because my for that business minor, yeah, for every test, that's what I did. I just reread the lecture notes. And and guys, don't. A lot of you might be saying, oh, like I do this, like and everything it helps you're saying, me. it helps me. Yeah. I would say that you're succeeding in spite of your study habits, not because of them, okay? Just because you do something and it works doesn't mean it's optimal. It just means that you've skated by doing it. So try some new stuff. So I think the antithesis to this idea is what we call active recall. So active recall is the king of learning. And that's just a fancy name for testing, basically. It's just so testing. So all this time when students are like, I hate tests. Why do we take tests? Yeah, there's some science behind it. No, there's some, there's some, like some science real tests. science behind it. And I want to hear you. So how do you feel about testing, though? What, when you're learning CS, mm-hmm. if you, what is, what is the best, like, th- does testing help you? Like, do you feel like, like, what, what, what goes on in your brain when you're going through homework problems, when you're going through concepts, and you're, you have, you're working through problems? Like, mm-hmm. what, what do you think is happening there? What I think, what's, what's going on in my brain? I mean, now you bring up active recall. I'm having to remember, like, um, let's say I'm writing some code. I'm like, hmm, how do I, like, what can I use? Like, what function, meaning just, like, what instruction can I call upon that's going to do this? And so I have to remember that thing that we learned in class. So I'm doing a lot of recalling it and, and um, just doing a lot of problem solving, which requires me to just go back, like, oh, yeah, how do I actually, what is an approach that works best to solve this problem? That's, I think that's really yeah, all that's, that's happening. That's really like perfect answer. Um, you are you are actively recalling and, and kind of going back to that effort thing I said earlier, yeah. if y'all remember, if you recall that information. <laughs> um, your effort when you're trying to go through a problem and you don't have the answer in front of you is is it's much greater, right? Because you have to struggle. It's difficult. You're like, oh, what was you know, in Mel's case, he's like, what's what was the instruction, uh, you know, they call them functions or, you know, you, you know a lot more than I do, but they, what, what do I have to use to get this data set, like, you know, manipulate this data and use this? Like, how, how do I do that? What's the best solution method, right? So when you're actively recalling information, not only are you identifying the problem, but you have to link the solution to the problem, which, which is a higher level of understanding, right? You're not just saying, um, do I understand how the solution works? Do I understand why this is a problem? You're saying, do I understand the entirety of the problem well enough to know not only how to use a solution, but know what solution to apply? Because not all solutions apply to everything, and obviously you know that if you've taken really most STEM courses. And yeah. we're STEM, so I'm going to refer to STEM. If you're not STEM, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't not mean anything to me. It just means just, that I don't have experience with it. So you know, we yeah, talk about what we're familiar know. with. That's it. That's what we're, we're easy with it. Huh? Um, the second thing I want to go over is, so you said you, you do a lot of things like in like huge chunks, yeah. right? Like I do all at once. How but does, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. So how well do you feel you remember stuff when you oh, do things in huge chunks? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's think about, let's think about classes that I've done in huge or, chunks. Uh, two questions really also. Yeah. The first one is how well do you remember stuff? And two, how well do you feel you are learning? Um, how much progress do you feel you've made when you're doing huge chunks? Okay. So. Classes I've, I've I've mainly done like huge chunks about it's like ones that I don't care right, and so I can hundred percent tell you I don't remember anything after I take that test like I don't remember anything like you you just don't like everyone knows that you you cram study and then like you do well enough to like you your brain just holds it long enough for you to make it to the test, Dro- it just drops everything on that test and then you don't remember anything out of there. And what was the second question? How, like, oh, how much so when you're doing mass practice yeah. which is this is like the technical term they That's, call it it sounds like a way better than chunk yeah they, they call practice. it mass practice um, or mass learning whatever you want to use like um, how much progress do you feel you've made and this is not I'm, I'm genuinely asking like how this is not like a trick question it's just yeah. like when you're doing like do you feel you're making a lot of progress when you do a bunch of work at the same time I feel yeah I would say yes yeah like you, you just feel like you're working on something for so long you actually make progress 
Okay. Like it's it's like it. I would say too, like that progress seems very obvious. Because I feel like this is gonna be like, no, you're actually not. But I would say the progress feels obvious because I think me and you were talking about this earlier, that like it's happening all at once. So you progressively see yourself getting better. Like let's say shooting, like from shooting at the same spot over and over again. Of course, by like towards like the middle of it, I'm really shooting well because I've just been standing at the same spot shooting right. the same exact shot. And and so that's a really I think. This, so what I'm, what I'm about to like kind of tell you why mass practice or mass learning doesn't work okay, is one of the dreams, Ben. Huh? Run my dreams. Just <laughs> run my dreams for me. It's okay. It happens. So basically, when you're doing mass practice, right, you get to like you said, like you learn a lot right then and there, and you make you feel like you've made a lot of progress, right? Like you yeah. do something and you're like, all right, like I learned. X, Y, Z, you know, A, B, C, like the whole alphabet, right? You're like, dang, like, I was, I was cruising today. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I was uh, moving today. Why is the alphabet you're so proud of? <laughs> it's like a little third-year-old kid. Just, I, I can just, well, you know, I, I hit my cues today. <laughs> <laughs> but so you feel like you've made a lot of progress, uh, but really, like you kind of said, like, you don't remember that, right? Yeah, you don't, don't really, know. you don't retain that information. And I will say that if you have a class you don't care about and you have information you don't care about, you should go buy a class. I'm not saying don't study or cram, but like, I mean, you don't really, this is for like, if you want to retain information, if, if you're trying really to really important. learn, if this is important, like this is how you, like, this is, this is what you want to use. If it's not important, then don't waste your time. Um, but what you really want to do is actually space out your practice and really kind of like change it up. Um, and so this is going to feel really weird and you're not going to feel like you make progress. So when you're doing, you know, let's say you're doing an hour of work and, um, I guess for you, like, let's say you're doing a, a problem set, right. And you, you work on a problem set for an hour and you don't solve it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how long it takes you. Usually I don't, I'm not a CS major, but, um, you might feel like you didn't make any progress, right? Yeah. But just by you exploring all of those solutions that you could have used or tried, not only did you recall all the information from lecture that you're, you're trying to solve the problem, um, you're actually going to you're taking all of your past experiences and your mm -hmm. knowledge and applying it to the concepts you're learning right now, yeah. which is a huge thing too, because you tying your current knowledge to your prior knowledge is a huge, like that is integral to you retaining information and understanding it. So I know I kind of went on like a, a whole like prologue there of like why, no, but, but practically to summarize it, cause I feel like, I, I feel know there's like a lot of information concept, there. very well active learning, right? This is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Active learning. You, I know you definitely have more to talk about, so I can push you to the next. But I'm going to summarize everything he just said. Practice is king. Practice makes perfect. Ex experience is the best teacher. Experience. Exper and experience means, you know, practice, homework, life test, ex life experience. everything. It, it applies outside of just school to life experience. Just you want to do a business, all right, you can watch all the YouTube videos you want about, oh, this is how I start a business, so I, this is X, Y, Z. And it's kind of like the, the hole that I was in a bit about business, but you got to do it. Like you want to start a business, you got to just do you, it. You gotta, you're not going to learn any jump other in. way. You just got to yeah. do it. When Nike said, just do it. They weren't kidding, bro. They really weren't. Just do All it. All right. So what's the next way of learning, Ben? What's so I, we have, uh, so there are some more things I could talk about, but yeah. I, I know I've kind of hit the most important things. Okay. So the, the two things, don't reread lectures. Don't do all of your learning that's important at one time. And spread then it out. Spread it out. So make sure you're spreading out your learning. So what, what um, actually, we'll get to what that looks like here in a second. Because that, that's what I want to talk wanted, about. Yeah, because I wanted to, because you said something really cool about why you spread it out and how, like, that helps you remember more. Yeah. And, and just to, one more thing, uh, active recall, super important with your active recall, spacing it out is very important too. So making sure that you, you space out what you're doing is going to help a lot. And we'll touch on this more in a second. So, um, taking you, these ideas, do you have any, uh, tips for the audience based on what I've said that you think would be very good, um, study habits? So, okay, because right now I'm thinking about, okay, how can I apply this to my mm -hmm. class, right, and then make sure that I do everything well. So, number one, so you said uh, talking about don't reread lectures. So, what does that tell me? Number one, it's not he's saying don't pay attention to lectures or whatever. That actually means, like, prepare yourself before, right? So, mm -hmm. instead of, like, doing the thing where I think people do the thing where, like, they might try to cram read before that class, like, they were supposed to read, and then they have to actually have to go back over and read it. Like, just spend the time to read it once. Like, just once. I will say... 
I've done a, like I did a little bit of reading on when you should do textbook reading versus lecture watching. And the lectures are usually a really good introduction yeah. to give you high level ideas of what you should be focusing on, right? That's and true. And so it gives you you can kind of filter out the textbook part. So I will say the the in terms of time, I would I think it might be most beneficial yeah, yeah. to watch the lectures and then read the textbook and then go ask questions. Next why, lecture. Why, why am I even? Why am but I? But keep going. Keep going. No, now, I mean. I, I, will, I will argue with that. I will argue with that to say that's that, fine. that... That's mostly my opinion, No, honestly. it makes 100% sense. It makes so much sense because then you just know, like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm just going to skip over this part. One, how, how many times are people actually going to, like, take the time to, like, be like, okay, oh, we didn't talk about this in lecture and skip over it? I don't think a lot of people will, but that's not even the argument I was going to make. I was just going to make the fact that if you understand what's happening before, like, okay, let's say don't... Maybe for, like... Well, obviously, like, different uh, studies are different. Like, English, you should read before the class because, like, you're probably going to be discussing that. But, like, right. let's say STEM concepts, right? Math, computer science, mm-hmm. engineering. Maybe watch a YouTube video instead of, the, instead of like, the textbook, right? Yeah, Maybe yeah, watch that's a YouTube true. Video that's a good idea. Just to understand the concept a bit more. Because to me, like, if you come in with a bit of understanding, it makes it easier it for you to lot. actually, like, pay attention and not just feel like, huh, what happened? And then you're, like, in this rat race trying to catch up and everything. But that's, to me, you know, doing that... Number two, I would say just um, really just taking everything you said down to heart, like just practice more, like try to do more practice problems than going back and just rereading the same thing over and Definitely. over. And then like the way you should do the practice is when you're practicing, you get stuck. That's when it like it like it identifies to you what you actually should go back and study. That's a huge point he just said. That like remember we talked about like when you're reading the textbook like you you got you you reading something you and think you don't un, you don't I mean you think everything's important but you also don't even understand what you don't understand right and so when you're test when you're testing yourself you really you get an objective that question just said you don't know what you're talking about because you didn't get it right clearly you don't understand something yeah. and maybe you you know if your arithmetic was off then maybe you understand the concept and it's okay to move on but you get the point right like yeah. you got something you got feedback that said. No, you don't know the concept, actually. And that gives you an idea of what you need to study and what you don't need to study. Because if you're good with, you know, you know a certain, if you deal with, like, uh, kinematics or, you know, 2D, 3D motion, it's like I'm, I do a lot of physics, so it's just kind of what I thought of. Um, then you don't need to study that. Maybe you need to focus on, uh, like, rotational motion, which is a little bit more... It's a little bit more involved, I guess. Some stuff that physics yeah, yeah. people only understand. Anyways... <laughs> um, I want to give some very practical applications because we're almost out of time. Please, yeah. Um, Practice. Practical practical me with applications. What you said was perfect. Um, Make sure we're doing uh, homework, like doing testing to make sure you know what you're doing. Practice Um, is king. Yeah, practice is king. That's that's a big thing. Um, But what does it actually look like in terms of what are some ways you can test yourself? Uh, And and if we... So, like, not actually giving yourself a test. Yeah, besides homework, um, and actually doing a practice test is... A really good way but um, I think that when you're in lecture writing down questions I think this is like a really good way to um, a kind of identify the big ideas because what you can do and you can look up the Cornell note-taking method um, Man, I ca- I, that's is, what I've kind of used actually supposed to be useful like I, I think it is pretty I only useful. use the format of Cornell I don't actually use the whole question side I just I literally just take questions in the question column now I call it the question column it and then on the right side I either write very many ideas or for me, I, I draw pictures because a lot of physics is just pictures. That's what I'm taking right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you should take questions and then go back afterwards. And your review is not to uh, look at your notes. It's literally just to see if you, can you answer those questions. And then go look at your homework. And the thing we talked about earlier was like when you're doing your homework, uh, I, I came across this idea. It was called the three, it's like the method of three passes or something. And basically what it was was um, give yourself an hour, hour and a half, and you just pass through the whole uh, homework, just real quick. You have five minutes per problem or something, right? And if you, you hit the five minutes, next problem. Doesn't matter. Did you finish? Don't worry about it. And then, so that's the first day. Second day, what you would do is you go back. You probably solve some of the problems, so you get a little more time. Um, make sure you review real quickly with the problems you, you've, you had right, mm-hmm. and then um, work on the problems you didn't get right. You probably will have like two or three more, and that's your third pass. And so you do that. Then you just got three passes on your entire homework, right? You, you kind of reviewed everything, yeah. and then you found out which ones are the hardest. So you also get an idea of which ones are the easiest problems, which ones are the medium ones, which ones are the most difficult. So I think that was a really good kind of like practical application. Um, so what do we have so far? We have practice tests, uh, taking notes in lecture. Um, that can also be like flashcards. Mm. Uh, doing homework, 
uh, kind of in a spread out manner. And then one last thing that I want to mention is making sure that when you're doing your uh, active recall of whatever, make sure that you are varying the questions. So don't keep all your questions in one topic. Try to draw them from different topics to make it harder. But wh why would that be more helpful though? Good question. Um, <laughs> so when you're looking at different topics, right, within different questions in a different, like, you know, in the same realm, uh, not only do you have to identify the problem, but you have a, a larger solution, you have a larger set of solutions that you would use for those problems. And mm -hmm. I keep talking about STEM, just that's what we deal with. Um, so you, you have to really understand the problem, why you're applying the solutions, and you get to, they call it discrimination skills. You develop your discrimination skills in, they call it interleaving or like varied practice. Um, but basically you identify the differences between the problems and the differences between the solutions, and that creates higher level understanding. So that was kind of the whole idea there, but basically just make sure you're, you're switching up, making your problems random. Um, sorry for the long prologue on that, but I, did, I read a whole book on it and I felt the need to really just give think, you all the goods on I what this, I, I read. This is definitely going to be a part and, uh, two. Like, we're, we're you want to do a part two? A, of course. It's, he said, he said, this is only 25% of what I know. All right, part fours. We're doing four, four <laughs> parts. Four parts for we, this. There is a whole, a whole other side, some other stuff we haven't even talked about. Um, but that is, that is the, the gist of everything. We covered the most important things. So just real quick, active recall, spacing out that, that active recall, varying your practice, and then those different methods of testing, uh, you know, flashcards, taking notes in question format, those are all super helpful. Last thing I'm going to say before I let Mel uh, finish this off, get your sleep. Sleep was like, they mentioned this like so much in everything I read. Man, sleep do you is, know? Is, is essential to learning. Even taking a nap right after you go to lecture will improve your learning. Do you, do you know how attacked I feel every time I hear about sleep? Because <laughs> I did not sleep in high school and I made it this far. So, but at the same time, it's like, I made it this far. How, how much farther could you go? Add some if sleep, you sleep, cut out some lectures. I mean, cut out some lecture <laughs> rereading. I'm sorry, professor. I'm gonna I'm gonna be there at your lecture next week. Okay. 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 No. Is your favorite part? Well, maybe not y'all's favorite part yet, but it's gonna be your favorite part. I found this quote. A quote from. From who? Armelicus Milius. A quote from Armelicus. It's segment. actually a quote from Confucius, but. It's actually a quote from Conf 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 Confucius. I, I found. <laughs> boy. <laughs> wow. I found this. Uh, I found this online. I thought it was interesting, and I'll be honest, I, I, I don't know what it means, so... But that's why I'm here. <laughs> we, we're going to change it from a quote, a quote from Armelicus Melius yeah, to... Ex explain this. I need, to, I need to understand explain this. Explain this, Armelicus Melius. <laughs> we're we're going to find a better name. We're going to find a better name for that. But, so, the quote reads, He who learns but does not think is lost. Pause. I feel like that makes sense, right? Yeah. That makes, that's, that's a lot. He who, he who learns, learns but, but does, does not think... think is lost. lost. So you're learning all this stuff, but then you don't actually know what yeah. it means or whatever. You don't actually think about it. You're cool just like, that. whatever. It's whatever. It just gets lost in your brain. I keep going. He who thinks but does not learn is in great danger. See, the, the part that really got me was the great danger. <laughs> I was like, I was like, is that a translation error? Like, what, like why great danger? danger? Like, why not? I don't know. No, I did, it just felt somewhat arbitrary. Like, I didn't like, feel like it was me, the right Let me read the whole right quote words. for everybody. Yeah, yeah go, ahead, go ahead. Quote. He who learns but does not think is lost. He who thinks but does not learn is in great danger. Right? So, so the, the, the part of the beginning part, like, okay, he who learns but does not think, all right, cool. Yeah, we're we're guess, cool with that. That's lost. all gravy. But he who, thinks but does, um, he who thinks but does not learn is in great danger. It's, explain this to me, though. Okay. okay. I, I need an explanation. My heart doesn't. I got, I got it's you. not satisfying. I got you. That's why, our Mel that's why you called our Melicus Melius. I right? need you to channel your inner Confucius for me so he can, so he can come, come back and explain this for me because I'm truly confused. It's like a third eye open. I am up. Confucian. But, okay. I am Confucian. <laughs> All right, but, so I really think, I don't think he's trying to, like, emphasize because it would make sense if he would have said, he who thinks but does not learn is a great danger. Like, because you maybe it's a play on the words of him saying, like, oh, he's thinking. He may not be, quote, unquote, learning. So, like, that makes him more dangerous. But that's not at all what he's saying, right? Because based on what he's actually saying, he's saying that if you think, if, if you think but don't learn, like, you're even greater danger. Yeah. So I think he's emphasizing the fact that learning is important. So that's why he starts off by saying he who learns but does not think is lost. So, like, I'd rather be lost than be in great danger. So he's saying, like, you should be, like, 
he's not trying like it's like a reverse he's not actually emphasizing that learning and remembering but he's just emphasizing that you should learn and it's better to just learn than not think at all wise analysis from the greater Melicus Milius or to think or to only think but yes that is wisdom with our Melicus Milius that's the name we come we're rolling with now all right a set in stone thank you guys so much for coming to this episode or you know riding in your car and maybe we might make these live you know we might make that'd these, be fun yeah, yeah we'll make these lives I'm eventually down. get us to a thousand followers on tiktok at aod podcast or is it no it's aod media on tiktok adapt or die on instagram and uh www.aodfashion.com just to get some cool clothes if you want to be authentic to yourself but appreciate you guys we're oh. definitely coming out with a part two one, one more thing uh, i want to mention is that we're going to start doing blogs um so if you want to get uh, a, a written format it'll probably be like a 7 to 10 minute read on the Ooh. same stuff that we've covered um, it'll also kind of be like your own notes so you don't have to take notes well, you can wanna, just read the, read, the, read the notes that I so kindly wrote for you you guys um, I want to first give a huge shout out to Ben I got, Ben Ben has made this podcast 10 times better just by him one being here you know showing his cute face but next is just what he brings and so like all this information like you guys said I can fall off and not do anything and this man Ben will be like I got you I got all the studies done and now he's writing a blog about it so thank you Ben the viewers appreciate you and uh, I know I do too alright well see y'all next week peace